the conclusion of that point of what I'm trying to make is that when we need God, we do everything we have to do to get what we Amen. need from God. Amen. Once we get what we want from God, we need God again. Amen. Until the next time, we need, we need God. Amen. Use us. Yes. Yes. No, we would never use God. Not us. So, the next point is, now, on, on, on the love of a father, how do you discipline a bad child? All right. A father that loves a child has to be very careful, woman too, because we will tell our children that we are proud of them when they're doing nothing. Uh -huh. okay. Let me explain to you, we want to be our children's friends so bad. We want to get the acceptance of our children so bad. I'll say, Sister Pat, I'm so proud of you. Sister Pat ain't doing nothing. <laughs> Everything I ask you to do in church, she won't do it. But I'm so proud of you, girl. I just lie to death. I tell Mother Sam, I'm, Mother Sam, I'm proud of you, girl. You're doing such a great job. She sleep every Sunday. <laughs> She sleep from praise and worship until the church is over with. I'm proud of you. I love you. We tell our children we're proud of them when they don't want to go to college. Welfare is their next hope. How, how proud of you you want to better yourself? Don't you know welfare keep you where you are forever? Forever. They don't give you a raise in your, in your welfare check. And if you get a raise, it's two or three dollars. It's like being on a job and they give you a 50 cent raise. They give you 20 more dollars a week. And gas is going up by the day. We, being parents, have to encourage our people, our children, to do way more than what they're reaching for. If they're reaching for an associate, we should encourage them to get a bachelor's. All right, all right. If they're reaching for a bachelor's, we should encourage them to get a master's. And if they're, 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 they're limited is for a master's, we should, you know if you go a little more longer, you can get a doctor's. Yeah, 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 yeah. If they're happy with high school, and they don't think college is them, we should encourage them to go to a technical school. That's right, that's right, amen. If they're happy with the technical and they got it, and they still don't want to go to college, we should help them find a good job. Yes, yes. After they get the good job, then we need to teach them how to save their money. We need to teach them that you don't got to buy the $120 things, because if you spend your whole check, you'll have nothing to save. That's, right. That's, That's something to be proud of. But what we will do, we will entertain our children into staying exactly where they are and giving them no desire to go no further. <coughs> Church folks, let me explain to you what I mean. Right. It's not enough just to want to be a member of a church. Right. Right. If you're happy with being a member, my job is pastor, pastor, my job is assistant pastor. The minister's job is to encourage you yeah. to be a nurse board. Yeah, man. Not to just be happy and satisfied with being a member. Yeah. To be a junior deacon, to be a deacon, to be a choir member, to be a praise and worship team, yeah. to do something more than you are doing. It's not enough just to come be a member. Amen. You should desire more. You should see yourself five years from now. I'm going to be a preacher with the preachers. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to start right now reading the word, studying the word, learning about the word, calling with the preacher, saying, can I hang out with you? Because I want to be more than I am. Yeah. Amen. Amen. This is what the love of a father is. God saw us as sinners, and he wasn't satisfied with us just being sinners. Yeah. He wanted to encourage us to be saints. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. After we became saints, then he said, I'm encouraging some of my folks to be on the praise and worship team. I'm going to encourage them to be deacons. I'm going to encourage them to do more than they've been doing that way. They can really see the love of a father. They can see me in them. They can see that I've grown things. I've planted in the results of what I've planted. We should have a desire as fathers to, to encourage our children to be all that they can be. I'm more than having a desire to watch you just be a member of United House of God and be satisfied with that. My
My job is to encourage you to be holy. To be better men, better women, better children, better saints of the most high God. And the enemy self, when you get to look at yourself in the mirror, you can say, wow. Yes, thank you. I remember I used to fall asleep in church. I remember when I used to nod off. I remember when I didn't want to come to church. I remember when I didn't believe in God. But look at me now. Look at it. Where I come from it. And my inner self. All because somebody believed in me. They saw the good in me. They encouraged me. And in order for you to get to that place, somebody has to take you and shake you and say, wait a minute. Wake up. I rebuke discipline. Yeah. They might have to tell you to get up and be on time. Amen. Be ready when dinner's soon to pick you up. Yeah. Stop being late. Right. Stop walking doing service. Amen. Stop talking doing service. Yeah. God will have an answer for you and you will miss out because you were talking to somebody else when God was trying to talk to you. Yeah. We're talking about the love of a father. Yeah. God sees what you go through in your neighborhood yeah. trying to get from one place to the next yeah. and God is telling you what street to go down and what street He's telling you who to have as a friend or who not to have as a friend. He's telling you who to call and who not to call. And unless you got the ear that you can hear what the Spirit has to say to the church, you will surely miss out. We're just talking about the love of a father. Father say no sometimes when you want your father to say yes. A father say yes sometimes when you think he should say no. Father tell you sometimes to sit down, shut up, and be quiet. You will not always get your way from God, nor me. A good father will have to tell you, stay home today. The friends of yours ain't no good. You, Paul, for those of you who study the word, Paul had to tell the other disciples, John Mark can't go. That's right. He wanted to come with us. He wanted to go minister with us. But he can't hang out with us. Even the preacher had to tell the other preachers who they can be with and who they can't be with. Yeah, yeah. See, sometimes, and, and there's a sad sadness of it, because the Bible says, ask and you shall receive. We think everything we ask for, we're going to get it. It ain't like that. Amen. Because we can ask for some stuff that'll kill us. We can pray for some stuff that'll end our life. Yes, yes. We'll get back because we can't go somewhere. I hope you don't mind me using you for an example, brother. Minister Hunter told me that he was in the military. I'm telling the story one minute ago. He's in the military, and he got to get up and go somewhere. And while he's gone, everybody in his platoon, it was 200, how many? 236 people was left behind, and all of them died. The reason he didn't die, because he had to go somewhere. Right. Had he been stayed there, said, I don't want to go, I ain't going, you can't make me go. All right, all right. He would have been dead with all the other people. Right. Right. Said one more time for the fast people. 237 of them was in the bunker. One had to leave. Yeah. The one that left stayed alive. And everybody else to stay behind died. Sometimes God will speak to you. You in somebody's house, you're proud you're having a good time, and God will tell you, you ought to get up and go home. You don't have no business here. And when you get up and leave, something happens to everybody else to stay. The Bible says the day that you hear my voice, harden not your heart. Because the life you save by listening to God, and then it will be your own. And my last point that I'm making. We're just talking about the love of a father. All right, all right. Now, in this last part, everybody, some children, if they have a strict father, say, Oh, he's so mean. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He is so mean. Now, listen, I'm going to tell you about my father. I thought my father was a cruel man. Because my father would invent ways to punish a child. My father would. Some of you, y'all too young because y'all know nothing about whoopings. <laughs> nothing about a whooping. Yeah. Amen. They used to have the phone books. They were thick. 